So good morning, uh, respected judges and dear colleagues. I am Dr. Anisha Moitro. The topic of my free paper is novel silicon plate versus auricular cartilage in upper eyelid reconstruction replacing a tassel plate. I have no pertinent conflicts of interest to disclose. Now, resection of tumors, trauma, or congenital anomalies leave large eyelid defects. The conventional cutler beer procedure was a major advancement in the repair of. Or do you the person? Please help. Yeah, it has come now. It has come. Yeah, you can start. Uh, upper eyelid entropy and ectropy on lid shrinkage were major complications with the conventional procedure. Uh, now we have done a modified cutler beer procedure which compares surgical outcomes, functionality, cosmesis of silicon plate with auricular cartilage as a tassel plate substitute in upper eyelid reconstruction. The aims and objectives of my study was to evaluate the surgical outcomes and efficacy of silicon plate versus auricular cartilage for replacement of tassel plate in 7200% lid defects to evaluate the cost and safety of using silicon plate and auricular cartilage, and to evaluate the functional and cosmetic outcomes. A prospective comparative interventional study over 18 months was conducted on two groups of 20 patients each, uh, consisting of the auricular, uh, autogenous auricular cartilage group and the silicon plate group. Now, inclusion criteria involved all malignant upper eyelid tumors with created defects of 7200%, and exclusion mm, uh, criteria just involved- Just a sec. Audiovisual person, please hide this thing, no? It's Okay, it's obstructing here in this screen. See this timer room. Involved. Shall I continue? Yes, okay, please. you continue. Uh, exclusion criteria included involvement of local lymph nodes, distant metastasis, and associated lower eyelid involvement, corneal infiltration, and intraorbital intra extension. Preoperative evaluation included uh, measurement of the marginal reflex distance 1, LPS action, palpable fissure height, Percentage of lid involvement by the tumor and preoperative confirmation of diagnosis by FNAC and incision biopsy was done. Now, these are the specifications of, of the silicon plate that I've used. Surgical procedure included uh, firstly, uh, the auricular cartilage was fashioned from the uh, post auricular region, and the silicon plate was fashioned from a 279 scleral buckle. After fashioning of the auricular cartilage and the silicon plate, a full thickness rectangular defect was created in the upper eyelid and the remnant of the upper eyelid was divided into the anterior and the posterior lamella. Similarly, the lower eyelid was also divided into the anterior and the posterior lamella. The posterior lamella bay was created and upon which the tarsal plate was embedded, the tarsal substitute was embedded and uh, the two anterior lamella were joined uh, and the stage one cutlobiot procedure was concluded. The stage two involved division of the advancement flap and reformation of the margin of the upper eyelid by a six zero vitreal suture. These are some of the post-operative pictures. Now, post-operative evaluation included standard post-operative visits at one week, one month, and six months. LPS action, MRD1, PFH, and central lid thickness were measured. Lid contour, lid closure, cornea were assessed at each visit. Histopathology and post-operative MRI were done. Now, uh, post-operative MRD1 and LPS action was assessed at uh, the first week, first month, and six months for the first two visits. The difference in the two groups was significant, which at the end of six months became insignificant. Similarly, with post-operative palpable fissure height and lid thickness, at the end of first month and uh, first, uh, first week and first month, the difference in the two groups was significant, and at the end of six months, it became insignificant. The, for the silicon plate group, the lid contour was found to be maintained in a larger number of patients, and the average operating time for uh, with modified cutler beard procedure with silicon plate was much less than that with the autogenous auricular cartilage group. These are some of the post-operative pictures with uh, autogenous auricular cartilage and silicon plate. Now, tarsal substitutes were previously, uh, that were previously used involved a second surgical site or a cadaveric donor. This increased the chances of surgical site infection and disease transmission. Although MRD1, LPS action, and PFH and lid thickness were comparable in the two groups, uh, autogenous auricular cartilage procedure was more time-consuming and involved a second surgical site. There was, uh, it required more skill. It required, uh, it had complications of cartilage perforation and breakage, and uh, the post-operative picture had a irregular lid thickness. Uh, corneal complications were not noted in any of the patients, and there was increased, um, with uh, synthetic tarsal substitutes like Medpor and Tarsis, there were issues of cost and availability. Uh, silicon plate, on the other hand, has low cost, and therefore it is more widely available to lower socioeconomic populations. In conclusion, the silicon plate is a low-cost, inert, thin, lightweight, tissue and time-tested material with a smooth surface and an intrinsic curvature. Uh, 
Although both silicon plate and autogenous auricular cartilage had fun uh, satisfactory functional and cosmetic results, uh, the silicon plate helped maintain the eyelid architecture and margin contour better than the autogenous auricular cartilage, and hence, silicon plate is reckoned to become the next generation material of choice as tassel substitute. These are some of my references. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Arundhati. It was a nice presentation. We have got few questions for you. Yes. One is that you have taken only those cases where cutler beard procedures were done? Yes, sir. Okay. So in cutler beard procedure and your end point of uh, your study was the lid height and the contour. Uh, Correct? The MRD1, MRD1, palpebral fissure height, uh, LPS action and uh, lid thickness. So I think none of these except thickness part is addressed by the tarsus plate substitution because lid height is not imparted by the tarsus plate per se in cutler beard at least because it's a complete flap which gives rise to anterior lamina and some amount of posterior lamina also so lid height is primarily imparted by the flap not by the tarsus tarsus gives you strength in the lid it gives rigidity to the lid so that there is no entropion and there is proper uh, structure of the lid so I think your end point of a study uh, does not address to the your aim, to your aim of study one. Secondly, you have taken silicone by a buckle, by, from by band. From a buckle. So it itself has a contour. contour. So there are flat silicone plates which are available in the market. So you could have taken those also. And... Uh, we have prepared the silicon plate at our institution from the buckle there. We have so, but the I don't think you will be able to negate that factory made contour. Whatever you do, that uh, the contour which is imparted by the machine, I don't think you will be able to flatten it completely. So we did not intend to flatten it. We wanted to utilize the curvature of the uh, scleral buckle. Okay, why? So, because uh, the scleral buckle, the intrinsic curvature of the scleral buckle, it uh, imparts the contour and the curve, it, it helps in the contour and the curvature of the lid. Okay, you feel it will help? Yes, sir, we felt that, that contour helped, will that help. That is why we use the scleral buckle. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? What is the uh, duration of the study? Uh, Ma'am, we conducted the study over a period of 18 months. And around 30 patients? 30, uh, 40 patients, 20 in each group. Okay. All tumors and all cutler beards? Yes, ma'am. All upper eyelid tumors, malignant tumors, and all the patients undergone uh, modified cardiac 